Exodus chapter 13 from verse 17 he says and it came to pass when Pharaoh let had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines right although that was near for God said let's for adventure the people repent when they see war and they return to where you know this thing is happening to so many of us even now there is a shortcut to your promised land and there's also a long route you can take and that long route would only cause you delays is filled with delays and you might not even live to see the promised land in that long route the children of Egypt when they left the children of Israel when they left Egypt the people who left Egypt did not see the promised land how many of you are aware? Oh, you don't know the people that left because of their unbelief the Bible said they murmured and they complained so they were destroyed of the destroyer even in the wilderness they did not see the promised land God took them through a long route do you know why? God said but eventually they will see war they will meet with the Philistines they will be scared and they will run back to Egypt into, so God didn't want them in bondage some of us has been in church for a very long time but we don't know that by reason of your works of righteousness you're already on the long route to your, to your promised land by reason of the way you serve God you're already on a long route and sometimes you might not even God forbid you might not even live to see yourself fulfill that God ordained destiny for yourself because you sitting in that which God has ordained for you you fulfilling it is as though you have entered your promised land some of us don't want to go through the shortcut the shortcut is filled with war warfare so when God saw that the children of Israel they will return back to Egypt God didn't want them to return back to Egypt some of you, you, were, you came from the world. You came into Christ from the world. God wanted to take you through a shortcut that will land you at your place of promise. But because today you are hot, tomorrow you are cold. God knows that if he should take you through the shortcut, if pastor should call you now and say, from now on, every week, start fasting three days. Every week, three, three days. Be praying for four hours every day. God knows that you will run away from church. So God will give you milk. Huh? You begin to drink milk. Pastor will be petting you. Hey, don't worry. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. You don't need to pray long. If you can pray 14 minutes, if you can pray 30 minutes, it's okay. You don't need to bother yourself to be coming to church every time. Whenever you have transport, come to church. Don't trek. You don't know that you're already on the long route. And you might not live to see destiny fulfilled in that route. The Bible says strong meats are given to them that are of full age. I think we should look at that scripture. Right? <clears throat> Let's go there. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Before we come back here. from verse 13 he said for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is what he is a babe so when pastor called you I, I didn't come to church today hey, yeah what happened and pastor I went for burial my friend's mother's sister's uncle's cousin died so I went there I was helping them to cook pastor when I said okay they are yeah, no problem but you don't know that the service you miss would have, would have, maybe it's, a, it's an ordained service to settle you or to give you a prophetic push into your destiny, into your God ordained promised land. But you just did that. Pastor just said, Oh, no problem, but hope you'll be in church on Sunday. You now say yes. <laughs> when Pastor called you, ah uh ah, -uh, sister Mary, sister, sister Maria, nobody's Maria here, right? 
Sister Maria, when was the last time you read your Bible by Pastor for some time now? My neck. Pastor will say, Oh, your neck. You say, Oh, no problem. Ah, your neck. Okay, come, let me pray for you. Is that why you have not been studying your Bible? Say, Yes, but I will start studying from next week. I will start proper. Pastor will not lay hands on you. In your mind, you think you think you are helping yourself. You are on a long route. And you might not see destiny fulfilled on that route. It is those that take the shot. That is why you can see somebody come to church one week. In two months' time, the person is already reaping. He's already seeing results. But how come some of us have been serving God for years? Though we think we are faithful, but from your action, your action does not prove you are faithful to God. We serve God only at our convenience. If the only time you render your service to God is only when it is convenient for you, then your love for God is not yet made perfect. Your love for God is still tricky. Your love for God is still not sincere enough. God cannot, God cannot value your service you render, the service you render to Him as a result of such kind of love because your services are controlled are controlled by the elements of the earth. What are the elements of the earth? When it is raining, you don't come to church. When there are issues, you don't pray. When you are sad, you don't worship. So your, your, your Christianity is controlled by the happenings around you. Come to a level where come rain, come shine. Nothing can pass with your God. The children of Israel, though they saw all of those mighty things God did for them, they saw how that God was a pillar of cloud by the day and a pillar of fire by the night. God spoke to them. To the extent that in the book of Exodus chapter 18, we did down, they came to Moses. They told Moses that, tell God that he should not speak to us anymore. Whenever you want to speak, let him speak to you and not to us. When he speaks to you, come and tell us. God was, God was ready to reveal, himself in, to reveal himself to the children of Israel and to keep revealing himself on stop. And not stop it. The Bible said they rebelled and they were destroyed of the destroyer. Why? They took the long route. The long route is filled with delays, it's filled with horrors, it's filled with darkness. It is God, God took them through the wilderness. You know what you call wilderness? It's a place of dryness. And so God is saying, You don't want to take the shortcut. To your destiny that means you would like the long cut the long cut is filled with petting because the bible said god was long suffering towards them you know what god's long suffering god was putting up with their with their attitude they are complaining for a very long time so when god wants to put up with someone's attitude and complain for a very long time god puts them on the long route so whenever you are complaining god is looking at you and god is laughing you will not be surprised that you will see a Christian. You have a friend, and the friend will tell you, "Oh, but no, be smart, you know." Yesterday, eh, I just the few one can say, "I don't, I don't, I don't." They go through delay, and for nine hours they pray. Eh, now once night, God come warn me. I could ask God for mercy. You, you have cursed God. You, you have insulted God. Yet God did not speak to you that you should repent. Do you know why? Where are you? Where are you? Talk now. You're on your long route. There are some people they will miss. They will just some guys will just look at a girl like this. They will just look at a girl like this, and they will come back to their senses. And in the night when they are praying, God, the Holy Spirit will come and say, "When that girl pass, they will say, where you look at her? Why?" Person will say, "Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm not doing it again." You, you did not look at the girl. Though. You, you, you carried her. You did what? You, you carried her on your head. Eh? You did a lot of things. Yet, God did not come to you to say, you, have, you, 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 you repent of what you have done. It means that already you are on the long route to your, death, to your promised land and it will take you time. The Bible said, if you are without rebuke, then you are a bastard in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. If you are without rebuke, then you are not a son. People who God rebuke are people who are who belongs to Him. 
if God is not quick to rebuke you as a Christian, that means you are already on the long run. You are far. So whatever happens there, no problem. Because in the long route, in the long route, it is not even you that will see the promised land. You know who will see the promised land. In the long route, it might be your children's children. So the long route is too long. Don't go through that, please. Stop giving all of this your excuses you are giving. The reason why I could not come to service is because um, my leg, as I was walking, then my leg bent. The reason why I could not come to service is because when I woke up in the morning, my body, I, I, I was shivering. So I could, not, I could not go and take my bath. So I had to rest. Excuses that will not give... I've, I've preached several times, no matter how genuine an excuse is, if you want to give it a name, what name would you call it? It is still called excuse. There is no sweet name to call an excuse. An excuse is that thing that has made up his mind you would never move forward in life. Men who are full of excuses don't fulfill destiny. Some people, their mouth is filled with... There is no way... See, if you succeed in life, it is your fault. If you fail in life, it is your fault. Let me say something. He said, there are actions needful to go through a shortcut. And there are also actions one can activate to make him go through a long route. It is all a matter of choice. You have got to be the one to decide whether you're, 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 you're getting to your promised land, which of the which of these routes you will take, whether the short one or the long one. We will know by your, by your actions. There are some people that we mentioned here, and there are some, there are some people I don't want to mention their cases. There are some sacrifices they have made. Sometimes when I think of it, my heart bleeds. I'll be like, so this guy can make such kind of sacrifice for God. Some people, they have left all what they do. They have abandoned their natural, they, they have abandoned some things that you might be thinking is so important. And they are focused on this God. Because there is something that they want to touch. It is all a matter of choice. Which route do you want to take? The long one or the short one? It's a matter of choice. Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 says, He said, I call heaven and earth to bear witness against you today that I have given unto you life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, choose one. He said, but and I gave you the answer. Because God knows that man is likely to choose death. I will say this, you must serve something. It's just a matter of time. For those of us who are coming to church now, do you think those people that goes to a native doctor, did anybody tell you that they were born like that? Did anybody tell you that they were born to go to a native doctor? They face issues. They face trials in the long route. They face trials. That is why the people of Israel, when they left Egypt, eh, when they began to face delay and trial, they had to make themselves what? A golden calf and they began to worship it. So whatever is happening today has already happened before. So men who take the long route, they don't know God enough to trust God, to wait on God. So what they do is that they take a shortcut in the long route and taking a shortcut in the long route will cause you pain. So what people do is that when they are in the long route they, and they are faced with situations and circumstances, they quickly rush to a babalawo, to an ezemo, they were going to church before, but they weren't serious in, ch in church. They have not developed enough capacity enough to understand how God works. They don't know how to wait. They don't know how to tarry for long and wait on God until God solves that problem. So because they've not developed enough capacity, when trials and tribulations strikes, what they do is that they quickly rush to a native doctor. All of those people you see going to Babalawo don't think that they were born like that. They face problems that they, they, they don't have control over. They waited on God, but it's as though God is delaying. So they had, the people, when Moses went to meet God in the mountain, the people waited for Moses for 40 days. Moses was not coming. So they don't have, they have not built capacity enough to tarry. Did you know that Joshua went with Moses? Joshua went with Moses, but Moses asked Joshua to, to wait halfway to the mountain. So Joshua waited there without food and water for 40 days. Moses' zone was even easy. 
Moses went to meet with God and when you are with God, when you are conversing with God, in that realm, that realm, um, time is suspended. Moses went there and Moses stayed for 40 days and 40 nights but to Moses it was as though he has been there for like 4 hours. Because at that time, the realm Moses encountered is the realm that suspends time. So at that time when Moses was with God, time, time was just phasing out. So Joshua was even the one feeling the pain. Because Joshua stopped halfway and Joshua waited. Joshua tarried. That is why the mantle was passed over to him. That is why of everyone that left Egypt, it was only Joshua and Caleb that saw the promised land. Because they, they, they tarried. They were the only ones obedient. They were the only ones that decided for themselves. Even if they are passing, even if because, because of the children of Israel, they passed them through the long route. God made sure he preserved them. So the people of Israel, they could not wait. They could not wait. They waited one day, 10 days, for 30 days. For, they said, ah, I beg, we need, to serve, we, we need to see something that we believe in. So they made themselves a God, a golden calf. And they began to worship it. Some of you will bear me witness that you encountered an issue one time in your life. And a friend of yours came to meet you and said, you get one man where he be, say, if you go meet her. Now, Christian, he be, oh, not be a bad person. Oh. Who tell you, don't you know that dating doctors these days, they wear suits? They will not deceive you. No, no person a bad person. Oh. Now, if you won't go to the service, you will see Bible for you in front. You don't know that Babala will carry Bible. You think this Bible kills? Right? The devil knows this Bible more than you. Give me. This Bible is the logos, is the letter. The Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 6, it said the letter kills. It. Letter will kill. If you, if you, if you, if you see this, this is the letter. The letter does not have life in itself. It is the rema you get from letter. And where the rema is, is not here. The rema is here. You are meant to be a walking Bible. That is why the Bible said the word was made flesh. And what did you happen? What happened? It dwelled among us. That means the word here, the rema you get from here should be made flesh in you. That is the one that is the light, not the one here. No, I said it several times when I was in Uniport. Somebody said, and um, witches do come to press him at night every time. And what the person said he did is that she, I mean, she said she's not a he. What she said she did is that she said she took her Bible and she put it underneath her pillow and she laid on it. He said, because she believes that this is the word of God. That once she do that, enemies cannot come and press her anymore. And she was told. The enemy will come and the first thing the enemy will do is that the enemy will shift your head. Just to prove to you. Just to prove something to you. First of all, the enemies will shift your head. Open the pillow. Take the Bible and bite half. And do what? Bite the Bible halfway. Bite it. Eat half. Keep it. Bring your head back and press you. So that you will know in this one. The Bible said, the word of God in the book of Romans 8, 10, um, 10 8, the word of God is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, not in thy book. Go there. Romans 10, 8. The word of God is what? Is nigh thee. Where? Even in thy mouth, not in thy book. Not in thy book. Say, but what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. It is not the word is nigh thee, even in thy book. So the people, they went through the long route and they were delayed. The Bible said in the book of First Timothy 1.18, it said, son, he said, let me call somebody's name. He said, if I, concerning the words of prophecy that has gone ahead of you, that ye might as well a good warfare. That means, if you must fulfill destiny, it is warfare. 
We are in a war. See, the earth is a place of war. Until you understand the diamond, the Bible says it is he that teaches my fingers to fight. In, on this earth you are living in, it is battle, war, fight. If you must fulfill destiny, if you must get to your promised land, it is not you don't smile to get to your promised land. You fight. You make war. He teaches your fingers to fight, to war. You are not known in those days as a mighty man because you know how to talk. You are known as a mighty man because you, you have gone to so many wars and you, and you came back and you conquered. How many wars have you conquered? How many battles have you won in your family? How many territories of, the, of, of darkness have you closed down? Have you shut down? Some of us, some of us, do you know that you have, you, have, you have really not touched your father's foundation spiritually? You have not tempered with the spiritual altar of darkness that has been operating in your family. You have really not touched it by because of your life of service to God. It's today cold and tomorrow is hot. And the Bible said, if you are neither hot nor cold, what am I going to do? I will spill you out. You have not even tempered with it yet. What you are waiting for is when you have money. Let me tell you, this money, money, money you are talking about. I've seen people I met with somebody that um, he had four houses in America. He said he four houses in America. He said he had so much money that he even have to bury some in his houses. He had all the cars. He got some of the cars he had. He gave me the address of his house. He gave me his name. I had to goggle his name. His name was Ngoku. But as I speak to you now, he's in Nigeria. He doesn't have a kobo to his name. And when I went to him, I was putting on this guy's story. I said, God, why would somebody get up there? Up there is not meant for people who have not built capacity. You will come down. Whatever you are fighting for to get up there, make sure as you are fighting for those things, you are building spiritual capacity. Because if you, by mistake, by paraventure, if you get there, just be sure that you are coming down. When we tell you, come to church, build capacity, pray, give yourself to priesthood, you will be thinking that we are just trying to force you to do things that is not, is not, your, is not your thing. It is not your thing. Such kind of person now, when issue comes, you will be looking for pastor. Some people are not in church today, but believe you me, when issue strikes, it is pastor. The fact pastor prayed and nothing happened is not a proof that pastor is not anointed. It's a proof that you don't have oil. Some people will come to church and say, if this man is true, he's a true man of God, let God use him to deliver me. Now lie. Ask yourself, tell yourself, if you are a true son of God, if you are a true daughter of God, let this man meet you today. Talk like that. That's not good. Because God depends on your priesthood to deliver you. You put everything on pastor. Pastor, pray. Pastor, pray. When your life, when your life is not patterned, is not patterned in God, when calamity strikes, you'll be looking for pastor's number to call. Disturbing pastor anyhow, pastor will be praying over a matter that God has ruled out. Spending hours speaking in tongues over a matter that will not yield any fruit. People who are serious with God, they don't cry for long. When they cry unto God, immediately God answers. They don't try. They don't spend time. Either route leads to the promised land, whether the long route or the short route. Either one leads to the promised land. But not both promised, not both promises or promise for your eyes to see. Ask the children of Israel. The Bible said they were devoured, they were consumed because they complained, and they were destroyed of the destroyer because they complained. It is simple. In the shortcuts, you have persecution and war. 
What do you have in the shortcut? What do you have in the shortcut? You have persecution. You have war. And in the long cut, what do you have there? You have affliction and delay. So which one, are, which one do you prefer to choose? Huh? Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 12. Second Timothy 3 12. Second Timothy 3 12. Second Timothy 3 12. Are you there? He says, Yea, and all that we live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? He did not say for some of you. He said all. And do you know what? Something about persecution. Persecution are things that grows your faith. Persecution does not kill. It only strengthens you as a Christian. As one who is focused. Persecution only gives you increases your faith in Christ. So it's a norm for you as a Christian to go through persecution. Hallelujah. Praise God. But affliction and delay is for those who have gone through, who are going through the long route. Hmm? And the Bible says in the book of Psalms 13, 34, 19. Psalms 34, 19. It says, many. <laughs> I will shock you poor today. He said, many are what? Of the righteous. Those, the children of Israel, those who are going through the long route, what they will face is affliction. Like the children of Israel, they face sickness, diseases, delay. Those are what they call afflictions. So if you are going through the long route, be ready for afflictions. And some of those afflictions might even kill you. I'm not trying to make you scared. I'm just telling you what is obtainable. Hallelujah. Some of those afflictions, it will take time before God can show his mercy and bring you out from. Because the Bible says many are the afflictions. You know that a righteous man can die. You know a righteous man can die. You don't know. Okay. Open the book of Romans chapter 5. Let me show you something. Romans chapter 5 from verse 7. It says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, but adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Do you know what that means? Jesus Christ is both a righteous man and a good man. Right? A righteous man is one who is born again, who has received the Lordship of Christ. Right? A righteous man is the one that has the Holy Ghost. Huh? A righteous man is one that, you know, you see his behavior. He is like one who can kill a fly. But a righteous man can die. Until a righteous man becomes a good man, he cannot be preserved. Good men are men of war. Good men are men that knows how to keep his food. Good men are men that knows how to preserve a territory. Good, good men are intercessors. When I begin to pray for Davidson, I begin to pray for him to enter into that which God has ordained him for, his priesthood, for example. And I make that time to fast and pray for Davidson, for example. It is proven that I'm not just a righteous man, but I am what? Good men are men who know how to keep priesthood. So you can be a righteous man, a born again Christian. You don't fast, you don't pray, you don't intercede. Today you are hot, tomorrow you are cold. You are, you are only a righteous man. You can't go far. Anything can happen to you. But Jesus Christ was both righteous. The Bible says in the book of Mark 9, 29, he said, as he prayed, the face huh, of his countenance, the fashion of his countenance was altered. What does that mean? Meaning Jesus is a man of prayer. That is what good men does. 
He fed 5,000. He gave himself. He gave sacrifice. That is what good men does. But righteous men, all what righteous men do is bless you. Bless you. Jesus Christ is good. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. The righteous men speak in tongues once in a while. Righteous men don't know the value of secret place. They don't go there all the time. Righteous men are only about their business. So once it's not their business, they don't have time for it. Such person cannot go, can, cannot go far. Such person cannot go far. You need to be a good man and not just a righteous man. Righteous men don't go far. He said, For scarcely for a righteous man we won't die. Yet, but adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Is there anybody now that can die for you? Is there anybody now that can call you? He said, Based on the good you have done, based on how you have kept your priesthood to, to, to give me a prophetic push into my destiny. Based on how you have introduced Christ into my life and you have made sure that I'm always focused. How that you always bring your, my name, write my name on your wall and every night you call my name and you, and you press into priesthood. Such a person will tell you, I will die for you. How many of you now can somebody in church now come and tell I will die for you? What value what value are you? Of what value are you? Of what value? How many lives have you been able to change? Do you think you can change life with the, the way you are living your Christian life now? You come to church whenever you like, whenever it's convenient for you. You come to meeting, you pray whenever you like, whenever you are weak, you don't pray. Whenever you feel like you can pray, you pray. You come to church, they say go for evangelism, you will say no, no evangelism, I beg, I'm not tired. Evangelism I've been for people and for people like the Davidson and the and the engineer justice. You think all of those ones will get you? Vikwani Sapia Teku Velidesh. It is simple in the shortcuts. Very simple. You have persecution and war. Why to go through the long one you have afflictions and delay. It is not enough to be righteous. Righteous men die. A good man is an intercessor. A man of war. A good man is an intercessor. A man who intercedes for a territory covered in darkness. And that man will pray for that territory to see light. A good man is one that we see a soul perishing and his heart will be heavy. A good man is one that makes sure that the government of Christ, the government of heaven, rules over a territory and makes sure that he keeps his priesthood in prayer, in fasting, in waiting on God to make sure that Christ becomes king over territories. That is who a good man is. Exodus 13, 17, 18. If you want to go through the shortcuts, engage the life of warfare. Spice it up with fasting. Run away from sin. Do the works of a believer. That is what I call keeping your priesthood and not losing it. Some of us don't even know what is called this. We think it's every single man, every single one of us is a priest. The Bible said we are made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on earth. So don't say it's just meant for pastor or meant for some few folks in church. It's meant for everybody. When you came to church, you saw a girl leading prayer in church this morning. It's not meant for boys. It's not meant for some few people who think that they are fired up. Priesthood is for everybody. Be you a businesswoman, be you a politician, you must engage warfare. You must engage prayer. 
you must engage fasting. Let me tell you. Hey! Jesus. There is only one way to fulfill a particular destiny. There are no two ways. One man, one man's destiny is different from another man. Their destiny are not alike. The route they should take to have that destiny fulfilled is not the same. One might have to be giving himself to consistent prayer and fasting every week. That is the only activity we need to put into play to bet his, to bet his God-ordained destiny. The other one might not really need to be fasting that much. There are things you need to put into action to bet your God or didn't. That's your promise that you are, thinking, you, are, you, are, you are praying to God for. You are saying, Father, when is this going to stop? When am I going to assess my... When am I going to... There is a particular way. Not two. So if God has said you will need to give yourself to much fasting and prayer and you are praying, you are praying now, you are... If you really, if you really want to enter your promised land, if you don't fast today, you will fast tomorrow. If you don't pray today that you are young, it is, on, it is at old age. When your mates at old age are in their rest, at old age, you will be running here at Asketan. Bishop Oyenekwa went to a, 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 a restaurant. I don't know if it's in Dubai or in, or in um, Lagos. An expensive restaurant. Him and he says the pastor that went with him that was telling us in the uh, winners those days. So when they went there and his wife and some pastors, he said, an old man, a man of 50, 60, like maybe say 50, came to meet them. He said, how can I save you, sir? And they gave the man what they want. They placed their order and the man left. And immediately, the said, this man played with his youth. He played with his youth. Some of you now, when they are telling you, these are the things that you would need to do in order to enter into your promised land, your God, your God ordained promised land. You are playing, you are joking. Now everybody go to pray, self. Now everybody go to fast. <laughs> Have you just seen women, old men, old women, they are still running from one pastor to the other? Why there are some old men? They don't. They don't. They, don't, they only have one church. They go and they only go on Sunday. Why? They will just go, they will just enter the car. Driver will drive them. Boom. They will come, they will come in the ah, Papa, that can show you. Hey, Papa say, Praise the Lord. Ah, my picking yesterday, Jeremy said, He wants to send 10 million for me. Hallelujah. Why there are some people that are still going to pastor for prayer? Pastor, pray for me. Miss Martin, eh? liver, kidney disease. They are, they are going for prayer. Because why they were young? They were telling them, pray. They say no, they will not pray fast. Be serious with God. They are jumping from one place to the other. Good activities. They, they cloud themselves with activities everywhere. And God will be saying, this man is already on the long route. They come to church only on Sundays. They don't bother themselves with all, the, all those activities in the week. They come to church and they act as though they are righteous. But once they leave church, they become worldly. And where God is going to be saying, this man is already on the long route, I will be patient with him. Maybe when the man becomes 50 years and begins to run her task getter, then I will, I, will, I will focus on him. God forbid that I will, I will, I will be 50 and I will be running up. And at that time, people will be serving me. You should be served at that age. There is the morning season in the life of a man. There is the afternoon season. And there is the evening season. The morning season is from age one to like um, 25. Your morning season. You are in your morning season. Afternoon season from age 25 to maybe 30, 35. 
40. Afternoon season. Evening season. Form 45. You don't enter evening. Form 45. In an evening, you day, meaning anything can happen. Stop playing. Stop. You have been going to party all this while. You are still going to party to today. And things are still delayed in your life. Who do God that party? You have been playing Christianity today. You are on fire. Tomorrow you are cold. Who do you make up your mind and say, I'm tired of this kind of Christianity? You have been giving yourself to mundane things all this while. Up till now, mundane things didn't sweet you. You don't want to be serious. I remember when Blackberry was raining, it was as though if some people don't have Blackberry, they will die. Now, where is Blackberry? If they even give you Blackberry for 100, would you take it? But then, Blackberry Boat 2 is as though you are on top of the world. That is to tell you that the things of this life, the things of time, does not last. It doesn't last. You think it is not your person. <laughs> oh, God. There are some of us, I see some of us, I say, you still have like five years to go. Five years more, because now you are not, it's not as though you are serious. a man that sang a song that this man is playing is in the spirit spend, spend my life spend, spend my life life and rape the nations for you I'm telling you so spend my life oh. so my life Lord and rape Nigeria for you now some people are not in church when you go there now, they will give you one flimsy excuse. This is the reason why I could not come to church. I did. Ah ah! You think what you are paying is tight? I love you. 90% Christians don't pay tight, no matter how faithful you think you are paying tight. You don't pay tight. You think you are paying 10% tight. What is 10%? What is the money? Did anybody tell you God is looking for your money? Which money? Your life as a Christian. You pay God 10% tight. The remaining 90% you give it to the world. Is that tight? Is that one tight? Which kind of move tight with that one? You think God is pleased to receive such, such kind of tight? In your mind, once I pay 10%, take hey, to God, everything that they will kill. You pay 10%. You, your, your 100% life and the 90% you spend in the world. And you will say you are faithful in your tight. Faithful what? The Bible said in the book of Matthew 23, 23. He said, you Pharisees are hypocrites. You pay tight in mint and in cummins, but you have forgotten the weightier matters. Jesus Christ said it. He said, you pay tight, go there. You, are, you think it is tight. You pay tight in cummins. He said, what unto all you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For ye pay tight of means and earnings and comments and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. You are paying tight. Yet, your life, your priesthood is lost. Paying tight. Yet, you are not consistent in your service to God. Paying tight. Yet, you are today hot. You are tomorrow cold. He said, you have forgotten the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercies, and faith. Say those ones you would have considered and not the other. This is the only time Jesus Christ spoke about tithe. The only one time he spoke about tithe, he was even against tithe. So long as you give, you give yourself completely. In this New Testament dispensation, it is all that God is demanding for, not 10%. All they pay ten percent in the old, but in this that's why Jesus Christ is not bothered about it. You know why Jesus Christ didn't bother about it? 
Jesus did not bother about time because he was already giving his life. He didn't give 10%. Jesus has given 100%. So what is tight? You will pay tight and you are in the world. And you're, in your mind, you are doing God's service. What service? Whatever you escaped from doing today shall wait for you tomorrow. There is only one way to fulfill a particular destiny. Only one. Only one. Some of us, we are too sophisticated eh? to be consistent with the service of God. We are too, we are too fine. We are too, I don't know, like, what will people say if they, if they catch you playing? What will people say if they catch you carrying speaker or coming to church every time or singing in the choir? You are too fine too sophisticated to sweep church too fine for people to hear you speaking in tongues some of us speaking in tongues in our, in our house is a problem we, we reduce our voice so that they will not call us a momijio you should be very proud of what you do when they come close increase the tongue they told Daniel ah mina sufi belia katovi kanamasko you are not going to be praying this prayer again. We don't want to be hearing you pray. But before now, Daniel will be praying with his door locked. Before that time, when Daniel wants to pray, he will shut the door and he will pray. Then I say, Hey, this prayer is causing, is causing problem. You will not pray again. If you dare pray again, you will see. Daniel, got, Daniel said, I have heard. Daniel went to his house. Open door. Open window. Hey, let Kwa, kwa, kwa. Make una hear. But you, they did, not, they did not threaten you. They have not threatened you not to pray at all. Yet, your friend is passing you as you are praying. You are, you are reducing your tongue. Because you don't believe in what you are saying. You don't know that thing you are saying is an heavenly language. You are altering mysteries in the realm of the spirit. You are conjoining. When you say Kabaya, Kumes, Abraktapira, Atos, for one hour, it is as though you have been talking for, for 50 days non-stop. You just combined 50 days talking into one minute. How much more when you pray for three hours? That is why God said, keep your priesthood. There are some things you cannot touch in your understanding. That is why the enemy is confused when you speak in tongues. So many things happen at the same time. Suvi na pek taloske velato merakta vara a panis to break effectuska. What I just said, maybe I might have said everything that should take place in this service. Yet, you don't want to be serious. We souls know you want to be slain. You as a guy, you want to drive Benz. They do think is to get up there that is the problem. Is to stay up there. Is to stay there. When you get up there, can you be able to stay? Can you be able to stay? Some of us would have to throw away some some things that that brings us distraction we have to throw them away go to your house and get rid of all, all of them some numbers today you would have to delete from your phone because some friends some people that you call friends they are not friends they are satanic whisperers they are sent by, by devils Promised land is before you. There are things that you would need to do. 